Over 40 years ago, our founders set out to improve the way people experience end of life in our community. We are committed to making sure that they're going to get what they need when they come to Hospice of Spokane. And since we're a nonprofit, we can keep that uh, the focus at all times. The whole model of hospice care is that the client, um, the patient, is not the only client, but is the, the family is also part of the circle of care of hospice. It is a, a huge decision to uh, uh, enroll in hospice, and uh, it's my pleasure to refer patients and their families to Hospice of Spokane. This is really actually hospital level technical care. So they're getting highly competent nursing care, chaplaincy care, social work care that's really geared to what they need. Hospice of Spokane is the only one that has the hospice houses, which is a remarkable benefit. The hospice house is beautiful, it's serene, but all of that pairs in comparison to the, the care that's provided by the team members. They not only get better quality of life, but in many cases, I think they get more time. You're going to receive some of the best care you've ever had in your life. My father is Eugene G. Sievertson, and he was an extraordinary man who used the services of Hospice of Spokane. I had the gift of spending time with Dad and not worry about anything else. It's very open and airy. The people are caring and loving. There was never any sense that uh, Dad wasn't getting what he needed. And Hospice of Spokane helped him have dignity to the very end of his adventure. They would make life life, not death. I just don't think you can compare that to anywhere else. You know, my mother-in-law passed away here. She came here with a life expectation of about uh, two or three days um, and hadn't really spoken or eaten anything for about five days when she was here. And uh, then she was offered some coconut cream pie. And for the first time in several days, she opened her eyes and said, yes. And so my wife brought her a dish of coconut cream pie and she ate the whole thing. First thing she had eaten in about 10 days. So I got to see the care that she received from totally the other end. Um, even got to spend a night in the, in the uh, uh, recliner next to her one night. It was amazing. I can see why she took 10 days to make the final part of her journey because she was just so cared for here um, and it's one of the harpists who played for her said, you know, sometimes some people just can't live here, leave here because the love is so great. That last year of her life, we were exhausted. What we got from the Hospice of Spokane folks is permission to be her children in her journey rather than her exhausted caregivers. We were at the emergency department at least every other month. And the minute uh, we had the diagnosis and called Hospice of Spokane, I thought, we're finally going, we're going to be okay. Not only are we going to be okay, but mom is going to be okay. It helped us so we could be calm and to just meet her needs. And in fact, when we would kind of butt in, they would acknowledge us, but then it was always right and back they, to mom. Right, they always looked at mom. It was just so amazing, the whole experience, that I think a lot of people think, well, then that means they're gonna die soon, but it's basically meeting their needs at the end so the family can deal with losing a, a loved one. If she could have at the end, she would have thanked them because she really loved all of them. I think she felt very, held in both warmth, peace, and competence. And she wasn't afraid because of that. We couldn't have asked for a better ending to the, her story.